Lisa class. In this lesson, we're going to go over protecting, saving, and sharing your workbooks. Adding protection to worksheets. You may want to add protection to worksheets so that they can't be edited by other people. This would be particularly useful in business environments. To protect a worksheet, go to the Review tab, then click Protect Sheet in the Changes group. So let's do that. Let's go over to Cart Revenue Worksheet. And let's say that we don't want anyone to make any changes to this worksheet. So what we'll do is we'll go to the Review tab and we will select this option, Protect Sheet. Now to protect the worksheet, it's asking us for a password. And this would be the password we use when we want to make changes to the worksheet. Right now we'll just make it password. It asks us to confirm the password. And the other thing is, is if you lose your password to this worksheet, you're out of luck. Now, whenever you try to make changes to any of this data, it'll say the cell or chart you're trying to change is on a protected sheet. To make changes, click Unprotect Sheet in the Review tab, and you may need a password. So let's go to Unprotect Worksheet, and we would type in the password to unprotect it, and now we can make changes. Now, as you probably noticed, when we went to Protect Worksheet, we could actually allow anonymous users to do certain things. So we could say normal users can do all of these things, but they can't delete columns and they can't delete rows. But they're welcome to insert columns and insert rows, and they're welcome to format cells and format columns and format rows. Um, there's other options here, uh, editing and so forth. So we could narrow it down to be specific, like you can add stuff, but you can't delete stuff. And that might be worth enough to protect it. As we all know, workbooks have many worksheets. And if you have several worksheets here that you want to protect, you could go to each worksheet and say which worksheets you want to protect, or you may say this whole workbook should be protected. In that case, we would click the Protect Workbook option. And this would, by putting a password here, this would protect the entire workbook containing all the worksheets in here to be password protected. Now, as far as saving a workbook, let's say you've created a new workbook and you wish to save it on your computer so that you can use it again. This is the most likely scenario. You can do this pretty quickly. You can go to File and you just click Save. Now, since we've already saved this file one time, the Quick Save option will just immediately save it because it already knows the file name and you just are saving it. If you want to save it out as another file name, and this might be useful because you made changes to this worksheet, but you want to keep the original intact and you want to start working off the new one. In that case, you would use the Save As option. And again, you would select Save As and you could be, oh, this is my new version. And if something happened that you didn't like, at least you would have the older version still available. So now we have two versions of this. We have Cart Revenue and then we have Cart Revenue New version. Sharing workbooks is useful as well. You can easily share workbooks without having to send them via email as large attachments. To be able to share your workbooks with other for review or editing, click the File tab and click Share. So we go to File and we select Share. Now what you would do from here is choose who you would like to share the workbook with. You would invite people in this cloud-based sharing. First, we would save the workbook to your SkyDrive. Then we would invite people who you want to be able to view it. Email allows you to send the file by email using your default email program. So we would first save it to the cloud, which, we, which is here. And then take a little bit to connect to the uh, SkyDrive out there. And we could just say, this is now on the cloud. Since this is our first time using Microsoft SkyDrive, we're just setting up some stuff. Now when we go back to share, this is the share, which is located on the SkyDrive, and we can now invite people to share. So what we would do is we would add whoever's email address, whoever at outlook.com, say, and then we would include a message. Please review, and then we could say share. And 
And there's different ways we could do a sharing link. We could post to social networks. We could just do it by email to send them as an actual attachment or to send a link to our SkyDrive. Commonly, you'd probably just email them an attachment, but if the file is really big and you truly want to share one spot with it, meaning that the changes you make on the shared workbook are immediately reflected to everyone else that sees it, then you want to use the Sky drive sharing link version of it. So again, the share feature is really powerful tool, particularly if you decide to save it on your SkyDrive and then invite people to have access to that document on your SkyDrive. Okay, let's go over installing and inserting apps. Excel 2013 gives you the ability to download apps from the Office Store that you can use. These apps include a thesaurus and encyclopedias. To download apps, go to the Insert tab and then click apps for office button. So let's go back to our workbook here. Let's click on the insert and let's go to apps for office. And then let's see what we have. So we're going to go, it doesn't see any apps, but we're going to go to the office store and see what they have for us. So what we do is we have a bunch of apps in here. Some of them that we can pay if we want to. Some of them are free. Uh, the Bing Dictionary here is free, so what we do is we click on Add. And if we decide that we want this, we click Add here. And then it asks us to log in. It asks us to confirm that we want to add this app. So we hit Continue. Now, what we do is we go back to the Insert tab and we come here and we select See All. And how easy was that? We click here for the, for the Bing Dictionary and we select Insert. So it gives us a little warning, App in Internet Document. This app comes from the Office Store. It will have access to the contents of this document if you start it. So we're going to say Start. And now we have the English Bing Dictionary for this app. So in this particular app, I'm sure it just does, I'm sure it just has a dictionary here, Excel, and it says Excel to do something extremely well. So not much of an app, but it gives you an idea that you can install apps from the Office Store.